You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Thomas versus Powell. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Ms. Thomas, you and your mother have petitioned the court for a paternity test to prove the defendant is your biological father. You want him to one day walk you down the aisle and say proving paternity is the first step. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Powell, you claim the plaintiff's mother was with another man around the time of conception, which has always caused you to have doubt. And unfortunately... You don't believe that Aniqua is your daughter. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Thomas, you say he's missed out on so much. Explain. I just felt like everybody else around me had their biological father. And I feel like for me, not having a biological father was depressing. It was... It's it's like a, a child without a mother, you know? And all your life, you believe Mr. Powell was your biological father, but just... He just didn't come around? So, I was always told he's my biological father. Um, I felt like he was. Of course, he wasn't around. Um, he could have been around more. And how does it feel that he didn't take that opportunity? I just felt like he didn't put enough effort in trying to get to know me. Mr. Powell? Yes, Your Honor. Why didn't you put the effort in? Uh, because I found out she was pregnant through a family member... And one of the family members was like, that ain't your kid. That's her ex-kid. And another family member was like, well, nah, I think it's yours. So, I don't know who to believe. Then a close friend of mine got me back in touch with her, and she was showing. And I was like, who kid is that? And she was like, this is your baby. Oh, so she told you this is your baby? Yeah. So, this entire time, you've had doubt? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, can I say something? Yes. Me and Cole always been friends, you know. If he had any doubt from the time that I told him that I was pregnant, even when I wasn't even showing, he could have said something then. And then when the baby was born, he became... He came and saw the baby, everything. He even told me he wanted me to name her Nicole his, after him. His name is Cole. Her name is Nicole. I mean, he spent time with, with me and the baby. So, he, was, he, he spent time with house, you and your daughter? And I, I, he would come to my house. He was spending time with her, taking her with him for the whole summer and all that. But now this pops up out, out, of all, out of 22 years. Now this come up. And he never once said, well, I want a paternity test. And as the years go on, he still never said, I want a paternity test. Now, this is when she's a baby coming up. Now you wait till my baby gets better be 23 next month. Now you want to bring a fraternity test in when you could have been did that. We didn't have to come all the way out here for that. We could have been like two adults. Like, we, we, we cool. We never had no, no problems with one another, none of that. All we had to do was say, well, I, I, I'm kind of feeling that that might not be my baby. Could we go a little bit further and get a DNA test? Wow. And so, Mr. Powell, that's a good point. I, the fact that she never heard you say, I don't think... She's my daughter. I want a DNA test. She thought you accepted it. Well, I remember... I remember telling her one time that I thought she did look like her ex when she was smaller. But that was, like, in probably 96, 97. Then I ended up going to the military in, like, 98. I get some child support papers saying that I owe child support for Aniqua. So I asked the... Like, the JAG person, you know, in the Navy... Well, I want to do a DNA test if I'm finna pay child support. He was like, no, nah, there's no way you can. You must have missed all that. They saying, uh, this is what you paying. And excuse me, y'all. When did that happen? One, I'm okay. gonna come to you, Miss Shelton. Just give me one moment. 1999. When was that? 1999. Yes. <laughs> Your Honor, can I so say Ms. something? So, Miss Thomas was like four or five then. Yes. Your Honor, I was all the way in please? California. I had lost contact with her for... No. We always had lost contact no. with each other. We stayed in contact because he always had my number. We always talked. As far as the child support, I don't put people in child support. You know, I never put him in child support. I was gone. So, whatever well, got, happened, happened I got paperwork when I was saying gone. that you put me on child support I in never 1995, you, I, three talk, months after she was born. We, we talked... So, what is that Honor? paperwork you're... Sh- l- let me see that, sir. It's from the circuit clerk. Uh, I guess of Cook County, and they're saying she Yolanda Shelton put me you on child support in 1995, 12, 15. 
But that's, that's your name. This is from the clerk of the court. That could be my name, but I never put you... That an action was filed 12-15-1995 where you, Mr. Cole, was the defendant and Ms. Yolanda Shelton was the plaintiff. I never even... I never even filed. They asked me when I go and you get... When, you know, when you get pu public aid or whatever, they automatically force stuff, but I was... I never put him in child support. So, your... Your testimony is you did not I go did not. to seek child support, but you did go down to seek public assistance. Right. And at that time, they asked you who the father was. And all I did was... Talk you to gave the, the name. I'm supposed to give the information. And I never said I want child support. And then the state pursued this action, Mr. Powell. And I never even And I've been paying since 1999, anything. and I owe like $43,000 in back pay. So, with your $43,000 in arrears, right you have to fear being arrested or losing your driving privileges or any other penalty. All that. Yes, Your Honor. All for a child you don't believe is your biological child. No. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. The summer she came and spent with me, she was a teenager, she was with my other kids. Her and my other kids had a, a conversation and they was all discussing like, you don't look like none of us. And I got six other kids that been DNA all 99.95% mine. Do you She's remember that summer, Ms. Thomas? Do you remember that summer? Yes. But even though we had the conversation, you can't tell the DNA off of looks. No, you can't. Because cool. I look like my mother. So tell me about that summer with Mr. Powell. What happened that summer? You felt like your dad had come to get you and take you for the I, summer? I mean, yeah, I did. But then also, he was still like a stranger to me because I didn't fully know him. So it was like at my own risk that I went with him. So when I went out there, um, the ride there was like kind of breezy. He was trying to talk to me, but I was like, I'm real shy. So I, I didn't really speak to him like that. And it took me like a few days to get used to him. Uh, he took me places when, we, when I was out there. We, we bonded. He took me to like uh, the state fair. He took me shopping. And I was, I was thinking about moving out there with him. And at that time, did you believe he denied you? I didn't, I didn't feel like that because kids have their own opinions, you know? So you felt like this was just coming from his children. Yeah. That he didn't question it, but they did. Yeah. And because you were allowed to come spend the summer, you thought, I'm here with my dad. Yeah. Did you ever have a discussion with him about why it was so on and off? Like, where, when you would see him again? Did you ever understand as a young person why your dad was so in and out and inconsistent? I didn't talk to him about it, but... I did talk to my mom about it, and she was like, you know, people move on. And uh, she didn't really have an excuse for why he wasn't around, because she can't really say or, or speak up on his behalf why he wasn't around. But when I did see him and I left, we exchanged numbers, so we kept in contact after that. Are you able to look at your father, the man you have believed is your father your whole life, and tell him how it felt to be without him, without a consistent relationship with him? So, I just felt like uh, you could have been more in my life as a father. And that we missed out on a lot as I was a kid because, like, you, you, you raised all your other kids and the kids around me had their father. So, I just felt like... A, I felt left out for not having a father, but it's... We'll make do with what we lost out on. My thing was... I. I just wanted to know the truth. I just wanted to know the truth. And I felt that yeah, I without that truth and, you know, stuff that was coming out from, like, I was at a party this year. I was discussing with some of the folks that I know back in the day, and uh, I was telling them about the situation I'm going through because they knew Miss Shelton. And uh, I was discussing with one of my guys. He was like, let me see the picture of her. So I showed him the picture of her. And I'm looking at him and looking at her, and I was like, dude, you ever mess with China before? And he was like, yeah, I have. Really? Excuse me. And I'm looking honor. at him and looking at the picture like they your even honor, got that's some... That's a lie. Because yeah, first you wasn't of all, there. That's... You wasn't at this well, party. Well, whoever it is, I know who I've been with and whoever you lying on or making up a person that... I don't just even asked just... him, did he mess with her at this time? First of all, the only one that I was messing with around the only person I was messing with was you, to be honest with you.
So that what you just brought up, you can you can just take that back because that ain't even true. This is what somebody told That's me. That's what you said. So you're saying this court. other person took Miss Thomas's picture and stared at it. And when you asked him if he had been intimate with Ms. Shelton as well, he said yes. Yes. That's back, a lie. Back in around that time, back in like '95. That's a lie because that's what he told the only me. The person I was messing around with was you. Well, wait a minute, and so now that's a lie. You are forty-three thousand dollars in arrears for child support. Yes. And well, you I, still have no certainty that this is your biological. What dog. I don't understand no. is that to get down to you could have been said something about all the doubts you said you had. You never brung it to me. You never talked to me about none of this. Well, me and her been like, talking about it, it doesn't now. matter. I mean, I'm the we parent. don't need you I'm in the, the picture parent. no more. I'm she the grown. parent. First of all, before she was grown, you could have brung all this to me. You said you had doubt. If you had all this doubt... I was a kid. I was like 19 I said, years Can old. Or maybe 18 when you told me she was pregnant. Let, look, I've been finding when out I told you, kids, you not my knew kids, all the time. Like I said, when I was pregnant with her, you was there... You and everything. You came to visit and everything. You was you was there. You supported. You told me the name of Nicole. I was 18 years everything. old, I believe. It, age anything don't you even told. matter. Yes, age dude. ain't got nothing I was to do a kid. with it. Age don't have nothing Somebody to do with it. Somebody tell you they pregnant by you. Look, you know you messed with you them. You know, you know for a fact. You know right? you don't probably believe that. This is I'm what I'm saying. Now. You were talking about some somebody said this. That's a lie. You could have kept that. I don't know why you lied about it. You already know that it was only you and my ex. China, I'm so, not all right. So, you. so regardless this, of it, you, regardless saying, of the fact, the truth, hold on, Miss Shelton. Regardless of the fact that there was one ex or even a third person, which he described. Regardless, if there was him and an ex, there still is a question right. of paternity, True. and that's why we're here. So, Miss Thomas. Before we go to the results, I just want to ask you, you have to hear a lot of difficult testimony yeah. surrounding this. And I know this isn't easy. What are you hoping for today? I hope that he is my father. I really do. Because I have, I have, his, tat I have a, his name tatted on me. Mm -hmm. So you got a tattoo with Mr. Powell's name yeah. already before you were able to get the results of the paternity because I you believe... years. You believe so certainly that he's your father? Yeah. What made you get the tattoo? I'm into tattoos, for one. And then, like, I always get people important to me tatted on me. Like, I got my brother's name tatted on me. So I added his name to the collection. And then, um... I don't know, it was just a bond. So it was like, I felt that if I get your name tatted, then somehow you're, I don't know, just associated with me. And I can see that that really meant a lot to you. It did. And so when you stand in this courtroom now and you hear Mr. Powell express his very sincere doubts, how does that feel? I mean, I don't like that they have to go back and forth because we could have been got this done. But, I mean, we all here now, so... I'd rather hear about it now and get it over with than to um, not know for sure if he is or if he isn't. What are you feeling, Miss Shelton? What are you feeling right now? I'm hurt because we had to go through all this. And you was claiming her all this time. This, like I said, this just came to me, to my acknowledge. Out of all the years of her life, all the years that men have been knowing each other and talking or whatever, it never came up. So it's like a, a bump just in, been dropped. And me. you are certain that Mr. Powell is your daughter's biological father? Yes. You have no doubt? No doubt. Mr. Powell, has anything you've heard today changed your perspective? No, Your Honor. You still do not believe you are Ms. Thomas's biological father? No. Jerome, let's get the results. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Thomas versus Powell, when it comes to 22-year-old Aniqua Thomas, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Powell, 
you are not the father. That is not your daughter's biological father, 22 years. 22 years of being told one man is your father and the entire time he is not. Was there some other man? Was there this there man no from the party? Man. There was no other man. Mr. Powell, do you know where this man is from that party? Do yeah. you know where he is? Yeah, I can get in touch with him. I say that because if this man looks at a picture and hears your name and says, yes, I, I did used to date her. I was intimate with her back around that time. I don't know whether what he's saying is true or not. I don't know whether the timelines add up or not. But what I do know is this young woman has the name of the man she's been told for 22 years is her father tattooed on her body only to find out that what she's been told for 22 years is just not true. These are the moments where it's impossible for us to truly put ourselves in your shoes. But that's what this court is about and that's why we do this because at this point in time, all I'm trying to figure out is who are the people and who are the candidates and how do we get them into this courtroom, get them tested so you can get the answer you deserve. All right? All right. Are you okay, honey? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna send you off to Dr. Jeff. All right. All right. I wish you the very best. Court is adjourned.